Um, yeah, basically what we're going to talk about is um, we want to hear from you, Nitesh, um, about the way you've leveraged your experience as a community manager to start your own community-centered projects, um, namely the podcast Beginner Maps and the matchmaking tool curated connections, which I feel like I, I always want to say for some reason, curated communities. Um, if I say that <laughs> uh, by accident, I'm, I'm really sorry. I like highlighted it really big. Uh, so I say curated connections, but um, yeah. So I have a couple of questions for you um, if we, yeah, to get started. So, I mean, I guess, first of all, um, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you located? Um, and do you have any New Year's resolutions that you'd like to share or goals? Yeah, that's, I love this, uh, you know, the first question being New Year's resolution because um, I do have like a ton of New Year's resolutions. So <laughs> um, my, uh, like my biggest one, which I've, uh, you know, been steadily working towards this year is to journal. So um, I've realized that um, I, I get some of my best ideas when I journal before going to bed, and um, I, uh, I I I realize it's like I I knew that this was something that works for me for a while now, but I've never been able to um, be steady with it because it takes like some time because uh, you know um, I need to make my brain not tr like I need to trick my brain into um making you know uh, making it feel like journaling is important so every night it's an exercise and then um mm -hmm. i've been able to be consistent with it this year um that's yeah. why that's my number one resolution <laughs> yeah that's yeah, great have um, you seen, yeah have you seen any like results with journaling with like either your own just personal thoughts or like the projects you're working on like do you feel like it helps you organize what you're thinking about more that's right. Yeah. Um, so I, I I use like Notion for journaling and I'm like almost exclusively uh, journal about my work stuff, like n no personal stuff. So um, I found that I get like a lot of my best ideas. Uh, and I mean, these are like, you know, very one off ideas that, uh, you know, that feel like, OK, I could have gotten them like any time. But um, it's it's crazy how many times like this just like uh, so this one time I remembered uh, that um, I needed to connect with a person who I who already knew and who was in my like kind of ruler decks but I hadn't connected with her in two years and then she ended up being like the key to a whole new persona for the product and like she was managing the community of ten thousand plus professionals and. Um, like I, it just occurred to me like one night randomly when I was journaling. So um, that's just the kind of uh, random one of things that um, my brain, you know, makes me think when I'm uh, in that journaling mind space. Yeah, definitely. Cool. And do, you, <laughs> do you have any other um, resolutions or actually where are you located? I'm in India right now. Yes. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm in India right now. I've been building communities, online communities for the past four years. Um, okay. Almost exactly four years because I started in January 2020. Um, I started, uh, like I was building community as a community manager for a community of data scientists for the first two years. Um, hmm. It was for an ed tech startup that uh, taught people uh, how to become data scientists and how to level up as one so um, I built community for that. I was the first and the only community hire. And um, we used community as mainly a marketing uh, marketing channel. So um, it like at, towards the end, like it was a, an engine that would help us generate articles for our newsletter and the blog, along with um, helping us get, uh, you know, helping with the support tickets, like reducing the load on the support staff uh through the moderator program and the super users program that we had built in the community so um that was like my first foray into community building and funny enough like for the first year of uh being a community builder like i was trying so desperately to get out of it because um i was <laughs> i was the most underpaid employee at my company and like we had um open uh you know like 
salary data uh, and everything. So I could see that, okay, a community manager is not like, um, it, it doesn't look like it has, there's a career to it. So mm -hmm. I must switch to being a product manager or marketing manager or something like that. But, um, but then I got really interested in it. Um, I, I actually, uh, read David Spink's book, uh, like that came out, uh, after one year and that like really opened my brain up and around the same time I started connecting with other community professionals and, um, mm -hmm. start seeing the opportunities in this space. So, um, yeah. And then like second year of community building, I started getting like a few, uh, people reach out to me for working on consulting projects, like, you know, building their community strategy as a one-off thing. And, um, and like uh, two years down the line, I had uh, two clients in my pocket and a lot of courage. And I decided to quit my um, full-time job and become a consultant. So um, yeah. then I did consulting for the next two years. And um, last year, I started working on the product, uh, Curate Connections, along with the podcast, Beginner Maps. And okay. this year... I quit the consulting life to focus solely on becoming an entrepreneur and growing these uh, products. Amazing. That's great. I mean, that sounds like a really nice uh, linear path, which is great. <laughs> or maybe that's just the way you're explaining it. But um, yeah, that's really cool. And um, so you mentioned that you have these uh, two uh, like projects that you're working on. Um, I want to hear about both, but um, I guess first, um, if you could tell us about Beginner Map. So how and why did you yeah. start it? Yeah, of course. Um, so I started Beginner Maps because um, like whenever I would talk to community people, I would you know, hear different stories about how they got started uh, in their community career. Um, so for me, it was like totally accidentally and, um, you know, unintentional i was uh actually trying to start a company and my friend told me that there's this another startup which has a similar vision to yours so i connected with that startup's founder we hit it off and he offered me a role i didn't even know what the role was but um i liked that the title had manager in it so um, i accepted the role and um and that's like that's the act so and the more I talk to people, the more I heard of uh, very, um, you know, unique, unique stories, unique stories of getting into the uh, industry. So I just wanted to create a, a place where, uh, you know, I could collect all of these stories because um, this, I have, I have this feeling that whenever um, we want to help somebody new, like it's, always helpful to have a path and role models that people can um, just uh, look up to and follow in order to make their journeys easier. So mm -hmm. um, this, yeah, having a collection of all of these stories um, uh, will, will make it easy for people who are trying to get into community building and make it their careers as well and, you know, be more intentional about it. So that was, that was how I started it. Yes, that's great. I think I think you're absolutely right that seeing uh, a model or seeing somebody else doing something maybe you want to do tangentially, or you know even just seeing somebody doing something um, that you know maybe isn't even totally related to what you want, but you can imagine yourself in their shoes. It can be super helpful and just really inspirational. Um, so that's really awesome mm -hmm. that you do that. Um, so what sort of people you kind of mentioned this but do you interview and um how have you approached them or found them because uh it seems like your uh, um who you're interviewing is really global yeah that's right yeah um so that was my uh focus like that was something that i had decided from day one that um i need to uh you know be global with this because community managers community builders are everywhere on the around the world and um I wanted to interview the best people. So like, uh, I, I read this book um, from this podcaster called Andrew Warner. And um, he, he published like a really good uh, book on podcasting. And there he had this uh, piece of advice that really stuck with me that um, you can 
punch like way above your weight uh, when you're reaching out and trying to find guests for uh, mm. booking them on your podcast because um, number one people like it's a matter of uh, you know prestige for the guests who uh, are t- getting on your podcast uh, to be asked for uh, an interview and secondly like the more such guests you have like let's say you're able to interview like two people uh, who are really big shots in the industry then that will make it easier for you to get the third big shot because they'll see that okay so these two people already uh, have been on this podcast maybe i should be here too and mm-hmm. um, that's exactly what i did um, so i started reaching out to people who i had never been connected to um, so i was able to get Kyle Haggy on my first interview from Morning Brew. I uh, I'd only heard of Morning Brew and um, you know heard of Kyle, but um, uh, I just sent him a cold uh, reach out on LinkedIn, and um, he accepted like on the spot. And he was really nice about it. He he knew that we were like newbie podcasters, and we had no business interviewing, and we made so many mistakes while um, uh, you know doing those uh, first few interviews, but. He, he was really gracious about it. Like being an ex podcaster himself, he, he knew what it uh, took, but um, you know, uh, that, that helped us get like more awesome guests on the podcast. So since then we have interviewed more than uh, like almost 30 people now uh, from all different, like, you know, who's who of uh, community led community um, com- companies. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's great. And do you, um, like when you, cause that's, that's actually how you and I met was, I think you just reached out and asked for some feedback, um, about curated yeah. connections. I thought that was really cool. Um, because I think when you reach out to people and ask for like their expertise or ask to hear something from them, it's, as you mentioned, it's like, you know, uh it's a good way to connect and it's also like kind of giving that person a compliment in a way, you know, cause you want their, yeah. um, their input. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's a really cool re- approach, um, for the next yeah, couple I think, of- like, that's a really authentic way. Like when you, sorry, but like, oh, no. um, <laughs> when you're not trying to, um, reach out to sell something like, um, that's, uh, you know, it, it feels authentic and everybody likes that. So that's the key here. Yeah. Cool. Um, Jen's going to take it away for the next couple of questions. If you're ready for that, Jen. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Uh, some, <laughs> some questions about um, curated. Oh, no, this is, this is, these questions are still about beginner maps. Okay, yes. Number four. Yeah. Um, so, well, I guess my question for that has to do with um, just the ideation of it, um, of okay. launching it. Um, if you could just speak to that, to because there's so many podcasts out there as well, especially in terms of community. Um, what, for example, is your differentiator? Um, what are your? How do you sit and think about? Okay, this is my next podcast podcast episode. What are we going to talk about? Who's going to be my my guest? Um, mm-hmm. As you mentioned, there is a lot of players out there um, in terms of community, mm-hmm. and most of the time, you know, it's always the same people. So how do you curate or, and pick someone that you know could add value and maybe introduce them to the world of community to other people and help them out? So having that um, um, symbiotic relationship. Great. Right. Um, so for the first season of the podcast, I was uh, looking for people who had an interesting career story arc. So um, they they had like some unconventional jumps in their career where they were doing like maybe they were in the con- construction industry before they came into the world of startups and started building communities there. So that kind of jump, like I would just go on people's uh, LinkedIn and mm-hmm. look at uh, who has such like, you know, weird jumps in their careers. And um, I knew that that's where uh, we have a story to uh, showcase. and. More often than not, even though like there are like a few podcasts out there for community builders, there 
they don't showcase the um you know i don't know they don't showcase the people who are doing regular like community building jobs like i don't know they mm-hmm. they're kind of focusing more on the heroes and uh, um i don't know the, the people who are already popular in the community mm-hmm. building space i can say so so um uh, my focus on the other hand was to interview people who just have had an interesting careers and so what happened more often than not is that the people who would come on my podcast it would be the first time that they were sharing their story anywhere publicly mm-hmm. so um that in itself was a differentiator and the second thing was i would just lead with my curiosity so for example um when uh, openai uh, you know launched chat gpt and it became really big and all of that happened mm-hmm. um i was following uh, them on twitter and uh, they have this um devrel person who would lead uh, all the announcements about openai on twitter and he was also really active on, he's also still as uh, really active on twitter and um i really wanted to understand you know learn more about his career story arc so um i just reached out to him and uh like two days later he accepts my uh, connection request like uh and accepts my invitation to come on the podcast and we had an amazing episode and that was the um episode like 29 uh 29th episode that we released that season so um mm-hmm. i think that that is the uh that is a, that has been the key for me okay have you learned anything from your guests on the show that maybe gave you a different insight or perspective or gone like hmm can you think about that that's really cool <laughs> yeah um i like this question a lot because um there's something so um before doing this podcast like i had been listening to a lot of podcasts i've been li- i've been an avid podcast listener for a lot of years now i listen to it um whenever uh, i go on my evening walks and um yeah. but i'm also an introvert so i never ever considered myself as somebody who would start a podcast yeah. um but i'm so glad that i had the um i don't know the courage one day to just randomly tell my brother okay we need to start a podcast and you're going to help me do it mm-hmm. um because what happened is that um the guests like even though the guests who came on the pod they were sharing tips that i had previously heard of like you know mm-hmm. uh they were telling uh me to you know not me but the listeners they were telling them to um uh do cold reach outs they were telling them to be bold in doing side projects and um uh tracking your wins and all of these uh these pieces of advice that you often hear but you know you don't really implement it so they just okay. uh like inactive inert pieces of advice but when i listen to it on the podcast and whenever a guest is uh sharing it with me it hits differently um mm. it you know moves something inside me and something clicks and mm. i start uh like it actually becomes impactful in the way i think about my own career or my own work so um it's all the mm-hmm. same things that mm-hmm. you already know but more impactful nice that sounds good um I feel like you never you think you have like an idea of how your career goes and then you meet somebody or you're here for something and it could like okay, alter that trajectory at some point sometime because you see it differently and so you pivot or you adapt to that yeah. so that's a, also mm-hmm. that's where that symbiotic relationship comes in too because then you you feed off from them um mm-hmm. Ugo, do you have any questions popping up in your head from what we've discussed or if not I'll hand it back to Joe. No, I was just curious about the podcast interview techniques if you had any uh, frameworks or um like tricks of the trade that you've picked up along the way to get those nuggets from your guests, you know, like any uh, really actionable techniques. Yeah, definitely. Um I'll I think I can share three things that I um that I learned the hard way so I would I was making a mistake and then I realized that that was wrong and um uh, now I am better off 
by knowing these three things. The first one is pre-interviewing guests. Um, so uh, all of these three things that I'm going to tell you, they're, uh, they're all written in the book that I mentioned by Andrew Warner. It's called Stop Asking Questions. And um, like I had already read that book before I started the podcast, but even after reading the book, like I was still making these mistakes. And that goes to show how um, how easy it is for us to ignore the advice that we already know until we uh, hear it from somebody or we implement it ourselves. But um, on, on the note of uh, pre-interviewing, I was like, okay, I've already done my research on this guest. I know what they're about. I know what um, like topics I can ask them. And, um, you know, they're kind of, like you know busy people so why why waste another half hour of their time asking them to get on a pre-interview and i can just invite them on the call and start recording and i did that and like the four times i did it all four times have been like like really bad (laughs) those four episodes were my first four like were my worst four episodes i'm not gonna say which episodes they were but internally like we we know like every time we uh, we do it we're like okay we're gonna be okay this time we you know even if we do not um do a pre-interview but it doesn't happen like there's just uh, uh an intangible sort of value with pre-knowing the guest and um getting to know um the feel of the conversation that it can make an interview so much better and you know that can make the guests more comfortable speaking with you so pre-interviews number one and um number two is to uh so andrew warner calls it just dig into what the person is trying to say like but isn't saying so um for example sometimes people uh when you ask them a question uh they're they're gonna answer that question but they're gonna end it with um with a lingering thought that isn't exactly an answer to the question but it says uh something about them uh, it tells you that they're they're excited to talk about this other topic that's sort of tangential to it but still relevant so um you you need to be proactive and double clicking over there and making sure that this, uh, you know, um, this insight that the person is essentially dying to talk about, uh, you you get that on your on your episode on the recording. And you gotta listen. And the final thing. Right? Yeah, you gotta listen. You gotta actively listen. <laughs> and um, the third one is about like uh, it's active listening it's uh, something used by sales people as well um mm-hmm. so what what you you need to do is when somebody when you need to just um ask a guest to speak more on a topic or you know there's like more in there and you need to just continue the conversation um you can basically mimic what they said and summarize it and um you know, uh, that that will make make them feel heard and also make the interview go better. Like it's it's kind of like magic. Like all you are doing is essentially repeating what they just said in your own words. But um, it works. It works uh, in normal day to day conversations. It works in interviews. It works everywhere. So um, that that helps in making the conversation. Um, you know flow more freely that's good no thanks for sharing i mean i think it's an art a little bit right you gotta prep you gotta structure have some questions in mind and know your guest but at the same time you have to in the moment sort of pick up on those little hints of another topic that they'd like to talk about or follow different threads and so it's I think that's the art of it that probably comes with hours and hours of, of talking to people in a recorded uh, method. But like, uh, that's a, it's a good book suggestion. I just uh, bookmarked it. So thanks for thanks for that. Yeah, maybe people don't know, but podcasting yeah. is a lot of work. 
Yeah. I mean, I think the thing I hear the most, like, is just people want a podcast, then they have like one recorded episode. They did like the, <clears throat> they went to the point of having one published episode out there. And then it just like the, the, the drop yeah. is episode two already, like 50% just have abandoned and the consistency <laughs> is the, probably the toughest. Uh... Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's Guys, true. Because I'm sorry. I, I really to go. need to, to go. Uh, Nitesh, it was a pleasure to hear from you. And um, yeah, yeah, thanks for coming. Great uh, rest of the conversation. Yes. Good okay. luck. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's if it's okay if I jump in with a question because, um, yeah, just on the topic of like uh, keeping consistency when you're trying something new for example, a podcast um, in your case, like mm -hmm. I find, I think this is what can maybe sometimes really separate people. And maybe this is like a thing for entrepreneurs. What makes you an entrepreneur and a successful one is that you're like, okay, with like the first couple things you do might suck. <laughs> and you mentioned that too, that your first uh, couple of episodes were like, eh, not so great. Like, how did you deal with, um, with that and then like how did you continue forward like yeah um actually like i was fortunate because the first episode i did it was like with kyle Hagi and he was a blast because um okay. he's uh he just rocks on any episode that he goes into but um i <laughs> have had like a few episodes after it um the uh it, it wasn't what i was expecting it, it didn't go as well as i was expecting so um I think what what keeps you going is uh, you have to enjoy the process. And I realized uh, for myself that even though I was an introvert, um, whenever I'm recording an interview, I am really in the zone. Like I am in a flow state, and um, you know, uh, because it it really requires all of my attention uh, to make sure that I am. Uh, you know, observing all of these cues from the guests, um, making sure that uh, we have a conversation where I'm hitting on all the questions that I have in the interview outline while still not going above the time. So um, that means interrupting the guests when they're, you know, lingering on. That means um, skipping over some questions that are not important and making these decisions on the fly. So that uh, 90 minutes of recording time is uh, really enjoyable for me. So that's that's what I uh, strive for. Like, you know, just uh, if, if, if I'm having fun, then I can I can record another episode and, uh, you know, I can keep going even after I've had a bad episode. Hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and okay, so Jen, do you want me to pick up with some of the questions? Yeah. Okay, um, so I wanted to pivot the conversation a little bit um, to talk about- Curated connections. <laughs> Curated connections. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like in your own words, how would you describe Curated uh, Connections and what uh, compelled you to uh, create this product? Yeah, um, so Curate Connections helps membership communities create networking programs for their members. It helps them ultimately increase the value of the membership itself. Um, so what compelled me was not having a tool like this when I was consulting. So mm. it's uh, this, like it started around March of last year, so 2023. Um, I I was uh, tasked with improving the engagement rates and um, you know uh, connecting more of our members in the community that I was managing for a client. And I decided that okay, I'll start a matchmaking program. I've seen a few communities do that, and they can just uh, you know the members can match uh, match up and have nice one-on-one -on -one connections with each other because uh, these are the people who are always telling me in the introduction channel that I would love to meet. Uh, other people from the community, but then nobody ends up meeting anybody. That's what I found out uh, through a community survey. So, um, so uh, I wanted to create a program like this, but when I tried to do that, I realized that the pooling space for this was 
really really bad so um all the tools mm-hmm. were either um like really expensive so the client that i was working for uh runs a bootstrap company so didn't have thousands of dollars to pour on this uh solution um and every month so we we needed something better and and also uh even even with the the options that were out there they had uh you know very clunky ui and the experience wasn't good for the members so that's what uh i that's what prompted me to build something that that is a better alternative yeah 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 i mean i think it it makes a lot of sense to you build the the thing that's like missing in, in your own work um yeah and yeah while you were building it so you and your brother built uh curated connections right and then did you i think yeah. i think you had yeah he used uh chat gpt quite quite a bit <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, um, okay. Curate Connections is uh, we built it using code. So it's not a no code tool. Uh, we we had to teach ourselves programming in order to build it, and that's where mm-hmm. ChatGPT really sh- uh, you know shone. Um, so early, like for the first six months, me and my brother, both of us were learning programming and building at the same time. Um, but after that, it became really clear to uh, both of us that. He's the better programmer of the uh, both of us, so I and mm-hmm. and the better uh, marketer uh, slash writer communicator. So we have uh, now separated our responsibilities, and he's the person who's handling all the tech, and I'm the person handling go to market and um, product design. Okay. So can you like share your journey from ideation to launching? I guess the pre launches like you said doing these um coding lessons that takes dedication yeah. and patience yeah. i would just want to jump right into it and then if I, there was coding involved i'd be like nope bye <laughs> new idea but um yeah what was your thought process uh your timeline did you give yourself like deadlines and like the project mm-hmm. management of it all how was that mm. Yeah. Um, so what helped us was that I already had a bit of a programming background, not in the same, uh, you know, web development space. You know, I've never built a web app before, but I I have programmed before in college. So um, I knew the basic concepts and that made it feel less daunting to me. Uh, so mm-hmm. what I uh, needed to do was um, use the resources online uh, that were available to teach myself. So we were essentially building while learning. So um, we would learn like something and then build like a little feature out of it. And then when we hit a brick wall, we would like, okay, it's clear. We need to learn some more. And then uh, we would spend like the next few days learning and then build some more. And that's that's basically the process that we, uh, we went through. We were using base camp for project management um, as a project management tool and um and then uh like this is also something that i uh, learned while building it is that the tech stack that we were using um it's called ruby on rails and the the person who created it he basically created it for uh, to be the one person framework so um a framework a web development programming framework that one person can use to build a complete viable product out there so um that's the framework and that's the text that i would recommend to anybody who is looking to start a a product using you know programming and um and we did give ourselves deadline um we we gave ourselves the deadline of uh, having like an epicenter of the product in three months. And we did, we had, we had an epicenter. It wasn't good. It didn't look pretty. Like it was really, really fucking ugly, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it worked and we were able to use it for, uh, one community, um, that I was already, uh, managing at that time and it was working. So, um, we spent the next, uh, three months to make it prettier and add some more you know, key functionality to it. And after six months, I 
so after six months after we started building it, I, uh, I, you know, soft launched it with my LinkedIn connections, started showing it to people. That's when I think I uh, reached out to Joe um, and mm -hmm. started the showing it to. Part. Um, mm. Yeah, started getting feedback for it. Um, and that was really crucial because um, that told us like we got some really tough feedback from it, and we realized that we hadn't built a few of the key features. So um, we spent basically the next four months building those features, and uh, in the process, we we were also able to get uh, you know like seven eight customers. Who wanted to use the imperfect product that we had, and that provided enough validation for us to, um, you know, just launch and uh, for me to go all in on on building this product and growing it this year. That's great. How um, how do you handle tough feedback? Like when you when you heard that, were you <laughs> like were were you taking it personally? Because you know it sounds like it was such a labor of love, and you're doing it with your brother. Um, yeah, just curious about that. Um, honestly, like, um, it did bum me out. Like every time you hear something like this, it, it bums me out. I'm, I'm not, um, that, uh, you know, I'm not a very, I guess, prolific feedback taker. My brother is a better one. So it, it helps that <laughs> we have to, we're able to balance this out. So, um, okay. Uh, even uh, even when we get tough feedback, and I'm like uh, telling him, "Oh God, this this sucks. We we're never gonna be able to make it." And you know, I'm like, uh, and then he he's the one who can handle it and who can talk some sense into me, and you know, um, he's able to tell me that okay, uh, this is like we need to build this thing, and it, can, it will take this amount of time, and he starts the planning work, um, and uh, I'm able to go in and uh, you know just be the person who comes in with new ideas and um he's the person who is able to maintain the existing ideas and take in feedback and um, do all of that uh, that part of the job yeah cool that's great sounds like you guys really have the the balance going which is really nice <laughs> we do yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess uh, I would love to hear more to how you've gotten people interested in curated connections and like, do you have any um, tactics specifically that you've used from uh, your career as a community manager in um, marketing, uh, curated connections or like get, yeah, getting people interested, etc. I think um, I really used the um, what what I learned about reaching out to people and making connections uh, through you know when I was uh, doing podcasts and even even uh, before podcasting I was al always uh, uh, reaching out to people um, in the community industry and asking them to jump on coffee chats so that's what I used for this uh, this as well. So in fact, um, I, I really remember this one piece of advice that Bree Lever, who came on the podcast, shared with us. She 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 said that if you get uh, on a hundred coffee chats with hundred people and ask them for for advice, like really ask them for advice and um, tell them what you want to do, then she was like, uh, I can promise you that you will be able to figure out the next steps. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna take this uh, yep. on the face and I'm gonna reach out to as many people as I know and even more, uh, reach out to second degree connections, third degree connections and jump on coffee chats with them. Uh, and I did that to show them the product and to um, you know uh, just get their honest opinion about it. And that worked and that's what, uh, that's what I've seen uh, work for me in the early stage. I mean, I'm still like in the very early stages with this. Um, we're still not uh, at Grammin profitability with the product, but okay. um, but I think but I think uh, this uh, feedback of uh, this this idea of reaching out to people is what has been constant uh, source of new opportunities for me, and that's what I uh, that's what I still practice yeah that's great it's almost a little bit like 
um, being a journalist in a way. I actually, I studied journalism in, in college and I think that like, mm. I always try to remember, uh, the, the thing I liked the most about um, writing stories was talking to people and having an excuse to reach out to people and ask them what makes their thing tick or like get more information because I think sometimes it can feel uh, at least for me, uncomfortable just to randomly reach out to someone if it's not in like a social context. Um, but I, I always think about how uh, there's like a lot of um, interconnection between a journal, a journalist and a community manager in a way. It's mm, interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what have you found as the interconnection like between journalism and community building? The research and interviewing people. <laughs> Yeah. getting your sources yeah collaborating everything getting yeah. your backup and sometimes just yeah co cooperating too it's like just talking to several different people and getting their piece of the story and then you interpret i mean that's not that's kind of what a journalist does in in, in a way i mean you're trying to pro portray the reality as as much as you can um without you know bringing in your own biases and i think maybe with with community, you can bring in some of your biases to create something. Um, so you can, you know, use different tools to do that. But I think really just getting this uh, perspective and the scope of um, of information and then like processing it through your own brain and your own experiences um, is, is just something that's really useful. I have a last question, yeah. maybe. Um, how are you marketing curated connections? How are you selling it yeah um so up until now uh we were just using these connections um uh, you know just cold reaching out to people and um seeing if they needed something like this for their communities um but this this month uh, we're planning another season of the big Max podcast where we're having people uh, like the idea is that we're now uh, using beginner maps as the content engine uh, and content marketing engine for curate connections because they're so um, like uh, the core is so synergistic. So the season will have the the people who we who we have identified um, as our core ICP, which is membership community managers and founders. And we'll be interviewing these people on the podcast. So that will allow us to create helpful content for them and also um, make connections uh, with them so that that can help us, you know, get more um, customers for the product. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. Have you ever spoken to anyone from like Mighty Networks or Patreon? In terms of like membership spoken, communities, spoken with somebody from um, Patreon, like somebody on the uh, Patreon team actually booked uh, a demo call once um, for curated okay. connections. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I think um, I think that's it for all of our questions. And um, since it's just us in the audience, <laughs> we can't ask the audience for questions. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. This is like you know. A podcast interview yeah basically <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> let's flip it let's pivot <laughs> yeah um well i guess you know what i do have one one more question for you so you already gave a good uh book uh recommendation um the stop asking mm -hmm. questions book do you have any other resources that you like um whether around entrepreneurship or community um, that you can that you can think of that are maybe not so obvious. Hmm. Not so obvious. I, I I still feel like David Spring's Business of Belonging book is not really obvious. Like I don't hear yeah. a lot of people talking about it um, okay. outside of our little community industry. But it's, yeah, it's really uh, good for uh, general community building advice. Um, and in terms of uh, building a business. I really like this book by Derek Sivers. Um, I keep forgetting its name, Derek Sivers. Let me just find it. Okay, it's called Anything You Want. Anything and, You Want. Um, 
yeah that that book has really like it's it's just a different way of looking at building a business so derek sivers and his writing is um it just flows like music um so uh, i really enjoy enjoy uh that book and that has really uh changed my uh my perception on building a business cool okay awesome well thank you so much for your time and yeah chatting with us and uh this will be uh, this recording is on the cmx um youtube channel so people can stumble upon it so if there's anyone in the future who's stumbling upon this uh, i hope you really enjoyed this conversation and um yeah i guess is there any um any way that people can like reach out to you i mean linkedin but also yeah anything else that you want to that you want to share um maybe people should check out your your podcast um for sure yeah um so you can check out curate connections on curateconnections.io beginner maps okay. is on beginnermaps.com and um i am on linkedin at um slash i am slash nitesh a g a so i think we'll be linking to those in the description of the youtube video right uh yeah i think so i think so okay yeah we can okay. add that uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay uh yeah those are the best ways and i'm so sorry that i couldn't get my video to uh you know get more no worries into you <laughs> <laughs> no problem okay i'm gonna stop recording now <laughs>